Mystery House. Mystery House, that strange publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Hey, Barb, you said the novel we're acting out for Mystery House tonight has a detective who never even sees the scene of the crime. That's technically correct, Dan. At least she never gets on the premises. She? Yes. The girl's an invalid. Oh, that sounds impossible. Oh, now, don't use that word, Mr. Glenn. Nothing's impossible. No, well, I can think of a good many things that nobody's ever been able to do. Well, I can remember when people said it would be impossible to make the radio commercials as interesting as the show itself. But listen to this. <laughs> Okay, places everybody. Set the scene, will you, Tom? Death passed my window. A story about a young girl who lives in that section of an industrial city where the tenements sit in squalid rows, side by side, with only a few feet between. My name is Hope Graves. I've been a hopeless invalid for eight years, ever since the night a hit-and-run driver struck me down. I lie in my bed now in a dingy room of a crowded, faded tenement. My one window stares at a window in another tenement, almost directly opposite. That window and the girl who lives behind it have become friends of mine. Morning, Hope. How's the back today? Much better, thanks, Jenny. If you were telling the truth, you'd have the finest back in the world. Always better, every morning. Did Eddie bring you home last night, Jenny? Yes, as per usual. Why don't you bring him up to your room sometime, Jenny, and get him in front of your window so I can see him? Hey, not so fast, chum. Nice girls don't bring their boyfriends to their rooms. Even when the girl happens to be a nightclub dancer and the boy's a sax player in the dance band. I'll bet he's handsome. No, I wouldn't say he's handsome. But he's kind of a sweet kid. He can sit in a crowded, noisy, smoky nightclub all night long, night after night, and and still not be there at all. Know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. The way I go sailing out on the lake in a little racing sloop, like I shop the beautiful stores on the avenue. Poor kid. You with your one little window. But I do have one window. You know, Jenny, I sometimes wonder if people realize what wonderful inventions windows are. You silly goose. Well, I got a lot to do this morning. Got to sew on some costumes. So long. Jenny's days and nights are all mixed up, like mine. It isn't really morning, but four o'clock in the afternoon. Being in bed 24 hours of a day, year after year, you forget about day and night. Time is just something to fill the best you can. It goes on, on, and on. Night. The hours from ten to three. Those are the hardest. Nothing but blackness outside my window. The complete blackness of night. Sometimes I wish Ginny wasn't a dancer. But then I'd miss the funny little squeak one of the floorboards always makes when she practices her dance steps. Her visits mean so much to me. 
Morning, Hopeful. What you reading? Hi, Jenny. The new mystery in the honey. Oh, I'll bet it's good. Oh, just that everything in the whole world is good. Oh, well, what are you so happy about? Take a gander. See? I know it's small, but you can see it from there, can't you? The way it glistens. Oh, it's a diamond ring. It wouldn't exactly blind you, but it's real. Eddie? Yeah. We're going to be married. Oh, wonderful. It sounds simply terrific. Oh, he isn't really, Jenny. But he's nice and a square guy. Oh, Jenny, you've got to let me see him. I'll just die if you don't. I'll bring him over to your room some night. Promise? It's a promise, hopeful. Cross my heart. And hope to die? No, just cross my heart. The way I feel now, I think I'd like to live forever. <laughs> Days and nights form a pattern, not all alike, but each like some remembered one from the past, one I know I've lived before, and one I'll live again. Ready for me to turn out your light, dear? Yes, thank you, Mother. I brought you something for tomorrow, honey. Oh, what? It's one of the Flamon stories, The Case of the Insulin Pin. I got it from the rental library. Oh, gee, it's a big book. Oh, Mother, you're wonderful. <laughs> Good night, dear. Night again. The hours from ten to three. Nothing but black night. <gasps> what? Light. A light in Jenny's room. Jenny! Jenny, how come you're home so early? She must be opening a wooden box. Maybe it's something she doesn't want me to see. Jenny! The squeaky place in the floor. She's fixing it. And I wish she wouldn't. I'll miss it. A lighted cigarette stub being thrown out of the window. And Jenny doesn't smoke. Why didn't Jenny answer me? I guess she brought Eddie up to fix the squeaky board. She didn't want me to know he was there. But I didn't mean to be nosy. She has a right to a little privacy. I, I just won't say anything to her about it. Top of the morning, hopeful. Hello, Jenny. When are you going to bring Eddie around? Gosh, honey, I've been so doggone busy. I... I see you finally got around to fixing the squeaky board in your floor. You could hear that squeaky board way over your place? Of course. It must have fixed itself then. I didn't do anything. Oh. Oh, I... Well, I, I guess lots of things do fix themselves at that. Hey, work hard last night? No, harder than usual. But we have a late show tonight. Gotta practice a little. You see it, you hopeful? Twelve o'clock. And and Jenny's light just went on again. Oh, this is wrong. Before the pattern lost its form, it was never like this. Never. It's not right, Eddie. Are oh, you jittery, huh? Your imagination's working overtime. I don't imagine things, Eddie. I would have asked to get off early tonight and come back here just for imagination. I'm afraid. Oh, Jenny. Eddie, let's get married tonight. Tonight? At this hour? Why, nobody's around. We could find someone. When you and I get married, we'll do it right. For keeps. Come here. Oh. I better? I, I guess so. Yeah. Well, I better be going now. I, I didn't have any right up here. Oh, oh, just a minute before you go. Hope. Hope you're awake? Oh, sure, Jenny. I just woke up. You been home long? Uh, no. Stick your head over in front of the window, Eddie. Hello. I can't see you, but if you're a friend of Jenny's, I like you. Hello, Eddie. 
That's Hope Graves. You know, the girl I was telling you about. Glad to know you, Hope. Well, I, I have to be running along now. Uh, will you, uh, will you do something for me before you go, Eddie? Sure, kid. Anything you say. Well, uh, will you, uh, kiss Jenny goodnight in front of the window? <laughs> sure. How was that, Hope? Why, it was beautiful. <laughs> Four o'clock in the afternoon. Time for Jenny to pull up her shade and start her day. That's really nice. Funny. I've never been jealous of Jenny's dancing feet. But today I am. She has a Prince Charming. And I'll never have one. I'll go on getting excitement from books. But I'll think of Jenny and her Eddie. I'll think of the misty sparkle in her eyes when Eddie kissed her last night. I'll think of it because it was so wonderful. And because I... I can't have it. Ever. <laughs> that Ginny hasn't raised her window shade yet. <laughs> oh, probably dreaming of Eddie. But she should be up now. Ginny! Ginny? Ginny, you lazy buns, get up. It's time for you to get up. Oh, Ginny! Ginny, is something wrong? Answer me, please. Ginny! I'm worried about you. Say something, please. Jenny! All right, open up, miss. You got your landlady worried. Examine Brian, Virginia. You know, the cop on the corner. Come on now, open the door like a good girl. Out of the house ordinarily she is by this time, Officer Brian. I called and called and it don't do no good. Virginia, are you opening the door now? Answer me. Got a pass key, Mrs. Schultz? No. These doors all got good spring locks. And the key to this one is locked. All right, stand back then, Mrs. Schultz. There's nothing for it but to bust in the door. Saints have mercy on her soul. That poor little kid, her head all caved in with a hammer. Wait a minute. What's this? Why, it looks like a long, heavy, black silk necklace. Yeah, but it's got a snap hook on it. No, it ain't a necklace, Mrs. Schultz. What is it, then? Well, I think maybe it's something that's going to hang a man. No, Officer Brian, no. You're all wrong. I know what that thing is, and you're wrong. Oh, I am, am I? Oh, yes. Well, what is it, then? Well, it's a thing saxophone players wear around their necks to hold their instruments. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Oh, but it couldn't be, Eddie. It, it just couldn't be. Oh, Eddie, huh? So Virginia had a boyfriend named Eddie, and he left a saxophone card in her room. You know when he left it? Oh, no, I don't. You know his last name. You know where he lives. No. You don't know or you just won't tell me? I said I didn't know. I heard you. But I've been around this neighborhood too long to be fooled all the time. Now, if you do know anything, kid, you should tell it fast. Why? If you know something that would pin a murder on somebody, that somebody would try another murder to keep me from getting the answer. And you wouldn't be able to defend yourself very well. <laughs> Is Officer Brian right? Will the murderer strike again? And now, Act Two of Death Past My Window opens at the battered door of the murdered girl's apartment. Somebody is knocking. Jenny, you're late for work. What's the matter, honey? Jenny! Jenny! What? What the devil? A cop? What are you doing here? Where's Jenny? She's down at headquarters, kid. Oh, no. She hasn't done anything. 
Take me to her right away. It ain't a bad act, kid. You almost convinced me. Almost. What are you talking about? Sit down. I want to see Jenny. She's late for work right now. She ain't going to work, kid. Ever. What? What are you trying to say? You already know. I don't know a thing. Quit torturing me. You've got to tell me. Something's happened. What is it? Well, Virginia's had an accident, Eddie. A bad accident. Her head was all caved in with a hammer early this morning. Oh, no. No, you're lying. No. No. It isn't true. It isn't true. It isn't true. This is death I've met. It passed my window not 20 feet away. And yet, invisible. In detective stories, death is always exciting. But this was Jenny, my friend. And it isn't exciting at all. It's just horrible. Where were you at 4 o'clock this morning, Eddie? I... I don't know. Did you bring Virginia home? Uh, yes, yes, I did. How did you get into her room? I didn't get into her room. Eddie, no. Brian knows you were there. He found your saxophone cord. Hope, tell him. Tell him I didn't kill Jenny. I've already told him, Eddie. You mean you told me you didn't see him do it. But that doesn't mean he couldn't have. All right, come on, Eddie. Where? Down to the police station. Well, you're making a mistake, Officer Brian. Don't worry, Eddie. Everything will come out all right. Worry? I'm through worrying. There's nothing to worry about or hope for or, or dream about anymore. And everything won't come out all right. It's no good, kid. Goodbye, Eddie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hope. Oh. That's a good one, that is. <laughs> Brian caught the murderer, huh? Took him to the station. Ah, such goings on. What are you doing in Jenny's room, Mrs. Schultz? Brian told me I could move her things to the basement storage. Uh, Mrs. Schultz, will you call Officer Brian for me? What for? Tell him I want to talk to him. That I have some important information. But you have already told him all you know. No, no, there's a great deal more. There is an old proverb, Hope. Murder, though it have no tongue, will speak? No. People who look for trouble... Usually, find it. Officer Bryant, will you do what I ask then? Well, now, that all depends. No, that won't do. You'll have to promise. I'm making no promises. You wouldn't want to convict an innocent man, would you? No. Promise? Well, all right. It'll involve some irregular procedure, uh, maybe illegal. Uh, here now, that's not fair. You promised. Yes, all right, all right. What is it you want me to do? I want you to go over next door and rip loose one of the moldings on a window in every apartment on the fourth floor except Jenny. Yeah. What? Does a Brian go back on his word? Uh, well, I know one thing. After this, one Brian will learn to say no. Did you get them all, Officer Brian? Yeah, fake phone calls to get people out, breaking and entering, destruction of property. <laughs> and me a policeman, too. Yeah, I got every apartment on the fourth floor. And may Captain O'Hoolihan never hear of it. Well, thanks, Brian. Now, all you have to do is wait. Wait? Sit over here in this room all by myself and wait? Wait for what? Just wait. And don't worry about being alone. We can visit. Hey, listen. Some of my destruction's being repaired. Yes. That's apartment 4D, isn't it? Sounds like it. Mr. and Mrs. Gutkowski. He's a section hand, and he's not the one. Uh, not the one? What are you talking about? Never mind. Just wait. Try to have patience. Young lady... 
Did you have me tear loose all of those moldings just so you could hear a hammer serenade? Now, that three's been fixed so far, and all you say is, that's not the one. That's not it either. Oh, that's not it either. That's not it either. How, how long do you expect me to sit in this room listening to people pounding nails? That's four moldings fixed. Only two to go. Oh, sure. I rip loose the window moldings and the people fix them. That's supposed to prove that the saxophone player didn't murder the girl. <laughs> Maybe I'm nuts. Brian, what? that's it. Huh? What apartment's it coming from? Well, uh, 4C across the hall. Get him, Brian, quick. Get him before he runs away. He killed Jenny. <laughs> Yeah, who's that? Officer Bryan, open up. Well, you don't have to be tough about it. What do you want? I want you to step across the hall. The room where the bed got murdered? <laughs> no thanks, pal, not me. Come on. You step over here by this window, mister. Huh? What floor? Hope. Is this the man? Yes. Yes, it has to be him. Say, what kind of a gag is this? I've never seen this girl before in my life. How about that, Hope? Oh, he's quite right. I've never seen him before either. See, Copper? But he killed Jenny, and I can prove it. Hey, you don't look too healthy, sister. But it's less healthy to make cracks like that if you can't back them up. First, Officer Bryan, there's a wide pine floor in that room, isn't there? I've never seen it. Yeah, that's right. Wide pine. Lie down on the bed, Brian, and then get up. Y what? Oh, all right. Okay. Your foot, Brian. Keep it right there on the board it touched when you got up. Mark the board with your pencil. What goes, sister? You ain't gonna rope me in on any funny business. Getting interested, mister? All right, Brian. Get a hammer and pry up that board. Well, it still sounds crazy to me, but it, uh, I might as well, I guess. Oh, no, you don't, copper. What? Stay right where you are. Put down that gun, you. You'll get a bullet from it right through your thick head if you make a move. I'll keep your hands in the air while I take your gun. And don't get any idea. What are you gonna do? First, I'm gonna do what the bright girl suggested. I'm going to pry up that board. Then I'm going to nick you enough so you won't follow me. And I'm taking on the lamp. Money. I've never seen so much money in my life. About 30 grand, copper. Your nice, crisp folding dough. Yeah, but the checks, all them checks, what about them? Ah, don't be dumb all your life, copper. That's the racket. The checks are hot. Lifted out of mailboxes. I got kids shoving hot checks all over town. I rented the room across the hall because I knew the dancer wasn't home nights when I'd be collecting dough and passing out the stolen check to my shills. I needed a sure, safe hiding place for the stuff. Yeah, and Virginia was working with you? She didn't even know there was such a guy as me. Until she came home early with Eddie. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She found cigarette ashes on her floor and a ground-out stub right in front of my door. And she was dumb enough to start asking questions. I couldn't have her asking questions. You'll never get away with this, lad. Get back, cover all out, shoot. I mean business. Hey, yeah. my eyes, my eyes, I can't see. Great try to shoot me, will you? Yeah. All right. Lay off Let's me, see. copper. Yeah. You don't have to be so rough about it. I'll be rough, all right. I can't see you, Brian. Is everything all right? Yeah, honey. Thanks to your face and that mirror in this guy's eyes, he'd have shot me sure if you hadn't blinded him. I won't forget that either, sister. Ah, uh, well, what you remember or forget ain't going to be of much importance, lad. I've got a feeling that you ain't going to be around long. <laughs> My name is Phil Hope Graves. I'm still a bedridden invalid. Yet, somehow, I don't feel at all like the same person who started to tell this story. The pattern has shifted back to its usual form. But for me, things will never be the same. I'll always know it can change. That my routine isn't set in a drab, colorless schedule that will never vary. Life? even for me, can be exciting. Thank <laughs> you.